Although Susan is now better informed about various aspects of kidney transplant, she still has many questions about the transplant procedure. What happens during the kidney transplant? Are there any risks during surgery? What happens immediately after the transplant? And will I face any post-transplant problems? Kidney transplant operations may vary depending on the patient's condition, but generally the procedure is as follows. After the patient has been hooked up to the necessary medical equipment and anesthetized, the surgeon will make a long incision on one side of the lower abdomen. Next, the donor kidney will be placed into the abdomen, and the renal artery and vein of the donor kidney will be sewn to the patient's external iliac artery and vein. After the blood flow through the attached artery and vein has been checked for bleeding at the suture lines, the donor uterer will be connected to the patient's bladder. Finally, the incision will be stitched and a sterile bandage or dressing will be applied over it. But what happens to my own kidneys? Are they removed after I receive the transplanted kidney? Normally, the surgeon will leave your original kidneys in your body unless they are causing problems, such as high blood pressure or infection. Mm -hmm. The procedure seems reasonably straightforward, but are there any surgical issues or risks I should know about? As with any surgery, complications can occur. Potential surgical risks and issues may include bleeding, infection, fluid collections in the wound, initial lack of function of the new kidney, clotting issues, and leakage of urine or blockage of urine in the ureter. However, most complications happen infrequently and can be corrected. Well, that's reassuring. What happens after the transplant? After the surgery, you will spend three to five days in the hospital in case of a living donor kidney transplant or four to six days with a deceased donor kidney. Anti-rejection medications will be started immediately. You will have to take two or three medication for the life of the kidney, which will keep your body from attacking the new kidney. Side effects of anti-rejection medication typically include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, along with an increased chance of infections and cancers. Your team will closely monitor how your anti-rejection medications are working since missed or incorrect doses will increase the chance of rejection. After receiving your kidney transplant, you will have to continue to follow up with the transplant team in our office in Medical Arts Pavilion 2. Staying in contact with the transplant team, even if you move, is vital to ensure continued care through the life of your kidney. And yes, don't forget to thank the donor family. For a transplanted kidney to survive, medications must be taken to trick the immune system into accepting the transplant and not attacking it as a foreign object. You might be prescribed up to 10 different medications and up to 20 to 30 pills a day. Since anti-rejection medications affect the immune system, you will be at higher risk for infections and would therefore also need to take medications to prevent bacterial viral and fungal infections. If you are already taking medications for blood pressure, cholesterol, or diabetes, you must continue taking those pills as well. Patients suffering from anemia may still need to take epoetin shots. Oh, wow, that's a lot of medication. But tell me something, is there a possibility that even after a successful transplant and taking necessary medications, my new kidney may stop working? Yes, it's possible. Some of the reasons why transplanted kidneys stop working include suffering a heart attack or stroke while the kidney is still functioning, contracting infections, or developing cancerous growth. Missing medications will also lead to rejection. Please note that the most common reason for hospital admission post-transplant 
is dehydration and infection. The frequency of these admissions will increase as you and your transplanted kidney age. Cancer is a potential medical complication post-transplant. The chance of contracting skin cancer is 50% within five years of transplant, which increases to 80% by 10 years. There is also a possibility that your old kidneys will become cancerous and a 1% risk of post-transplant lymphoproliferative disorder caused by the Epstein-Barr or monovirus. A kidney from a deceased donor can sometimes take two to four weeks or more to start working. This is known as delayed graft function or sleepy kidney. So you may need to be on dialysis for a short time before your sleepy kidney wakes up and starts working. Finally, there's the risk of organ rejection. However, rejection does not always mean you lose your kidney. Since the symptoms of rejection may be silent and may look like other medical conditions or problems, frequent lab tests are required, including a biopsy after three months and then after a year from transplant. I now feel better informed and much better equipped to decide if a transplant is right for me. I'm actually looking forward to complete the rest of my transplant journey with a lot of optimism. Thank you so much, Claire. Like Susan, most of your questions about kidney transplant will be addressed on evaluation day. If they are not, or if you have any other questions, please do let us know. At Christiana Care, we are always glad to be of assistance. Thank you for being with Susan on her virtual transplant journey. Before you leave, please take a short quiz to check your understanding of the kidney transplant process.